this is what I am. Um, okay, cool. We can get started. Okay, so this is what I'm talking. This is my talk. Uh, do I have my mouse? Okay. So I'm talking about. I'm talking. Well, I'm trying to. So Christmas season is there. I'm trying to give you another reason to buy a switch. So. <coughs> Uh, how does that relate to our life as a React yeah, developer, right? So it turns out you can use your professional skills to turn part of your switch, namely the Joy-Cons, into a clicker that you can use to interact with your page. So let's get this started. Right? Um, so before we dive in, let me give you some, some more context. For nearly uh, half a year, I've been building the slides feature for my own site. And um, you, might, you might wonder, since there are already so many existing arts, including the one that we just uh, saw uh, just now, right? why still create my own uh, presentation slides? So there's Review.js, which is, uh, <coughs> has been there for a, year, uh, for, for a few years. And Slides.com is like the commercial product on top of Review.js. And then there's MDX deck, which turns your MDX file into a, um, <coughs> a presentation slice. And then there's actually a Gatsby theme on, uh, built on top of MDX deck. And there's Spectacle, which is uh, a React presentation framework. And then if you do not know, Drop, Dropbox, uh, Dropbox paper can present. And then many developers also choose to build their own. So uh, why am I still creating my own presentation slides? And I think first, that comes down to one very philosophical question. Do chefs cook at home? So this is about my own ego as a developer who writes professional React components at work. And chefs can cook at home and feed everybody. What can I do with my professional skills like at home? Um, <clears throat> also, since I write out all the scripts, for nearly most talks I've done in my life, um, I appreciate that good talks are also good reads. And since um, how I create the slides, it's also roughly to take the headings out. I, I write out the scripts and I take all the he headings out. I uh, basically just present all the headings, uh, images, uh, add some emojis, and then turn all the scripts into uh, speaker notes. So. Um, I can literally uh, take one markdown file and compile that to article or presentation when, when um, um, according to the needs. Okay, so it kind of shares the same spirit with the Gatsby theme waves that Raj just talked about, right? But it's uh, it, so I have my own approach. Um, <clears throat> so with all the motivations I mentioned above. I started building the, um, the React Knowledgeable site uh, five months ago with the birth of this meetup. And then there is a very crude version of this that I want to show you here. Oh, huh? shit, sorry. OK, so this is the initial very crude version. It's not just very crude. It's actually cheating. So if I press P here. Uh, you have a presentation slide, and then if you press spacebar, it's going to page. But that's actually cheating because uh, you can just scroll back up. So that's not really, uh, yeah. Um, okay, let's 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 go back. So um, are we still here? Okay, so after the initial like crew version, my appetite kind of just grew bigger. Like I need a timer, so I built the timer. Let me see if I can show you. Um, uh, if I open like speaker notes, then um, speaker notes, then you can see the timer on the bottom. Then you can pause. Then you can start. Uh, I can have a speaker mode. Um, I can have both the the speaker notes as well as the presentation, and I can have just the presentation that you are seeing here. And I can go full screen as you can, like now it's going full screen. Um, <clears throat> and, yeah, and eventually you come down to this, can I remote control the slides? Um, so actually they can be quite trivial once you have your keyboard shortcut up. Because there are many clickers out there already, and most of them will map to a key on your keyboard. 
Some even got very cool features, such as a, a pointer. Um, and then later on, I was at JSCon Budapest earlier this year, and during the closing keynote by Jay Kinsuma, uh, um, <coughs> he's like, look at here, what are, we, what are we holding on to? Can you see here? That's each, they're each holding on to a uh, Joy-Con clicker. So I'm like, this is the kind of things that all the cool kids, like you guys here, are quite excited about, right? So I'm, like, I'm gonna build this. Um, so, um, so I went ahead and borrowed a pair of Joy-Cons. I connected them to my Mac with Bluetooth. The connection works. Um, then I tried to click on it at my size, and nothing works, like apparently. So um, no magic will happen because those are not extra keyboards and those are not extra mouse. They're game pads. And we actually need to create the magic to make them work in browsers. So namely, we need the gamepad API. And by the way, what are your expectations? So first, my naive imagination was that I write something similar to the keyboard event handlers, right? That looks like this. So maybe you have some imaginary joy compress, and then you can say the event, and then you can do your own thing. Uh, wrong, <laughs> no. Um, <clears throat> So the only event handlers that the GamePad API it exposes are the GamePad connected and the GamePad disconnected APIs. So how to use them? Um, so it turns out you need to pull key presses by yourself. Um, then it's like, I don't know about you, but I actually felt quite cheated. Like, 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 like the cat, uh, well that's Brian's cat, by the way, the name is also Gatsby. I'm um, trying to relate my talk to Gatsby today. Maybe it's not. <laughs> um, so how to pull key presses? Um, it turns out that we, um, so if you follow the MDN guide, uh, you will implement something called a game loop because we're coding the gamepad API, right? So the main idea of a game loop is that it's like a snake that eats its own tail. So for each round, we do what we need to do which normally is to do some updates, and once we're done, we call game loop again. And so, so that kind of just keeps running. Um, and then we should not forget to kick it off uh, by calling it first. But in real life, we're, uh, browser, uh, we're web developers. Um, we are interrupting the game loop with the browser's event loop. So in this case, we're relying on the browser's request animation frame DOM API. So we're kind of weaving our updates into the browser's event loop at one frame at a time. And we start this process when the gamepad is connected, and we stop it when it disconnects. So everybody stay with me? Yeah? Cool. Okay. So if you want to learn a bit more about game loop, you can, you can, you can go read this book. Um, because here today we're only very shallowly talking about game loop, but that actually is a very interesting topic by itself and it's completely worth a separate talk. Maybe I will do my talk some later time. Uh, its original intent was used to align game processes across different CPU time with our time. So you'll have the chance during your game loop to adjust your time. You can slice out extra time or you can match your rendering with the process with respect to real physical time. Um, so I also learned last week from Sean's talk that React also uses a work loop and time slicing to keep time in check, similarly, uh, with a similar uh, design with the game loop. So how, what we actually do inside the game loop is that we can use the DOM's navigator API to get access to the game pass. We don't have to do that. We can also uh, maintain our own game pass when the game pad connected. And then when we peek into what's inside the game object. It'll be this giant object containing the data representing our most updated state of the gamepad. Um, all of them are mutating. So, um, so axis is the joystick, and then buttons is an array of buttons, uh, each mapping to one of the buttons on your gamepad. Um, there is some other information, and then uh, beneath here, uh, we have host, which will be the gravity sensor. So at, 
once again, at each single frame, we have the most updated information of our gamepad. Um, and now, so we have access to all those data available. That makes total sense to ev everyone here, right? Uh, we really have all the freedom, however we want, to use them. So I think this is when I think how we organize our code matters. Um, you can go for an object-oriented approach, although for my use case, I find it the most um, uh, convenient when I supply a list of buttons I care about, and I supply the callbacks I want to fire if such and such buttons are pressed. And during each frame of the game loop, I can loop through all these buttons and update accordingly. Okay, so um, uh, let's see some demos. Earlier this year, I happened to code this uh, beautiful CSS uh, switch up. And uh, at the end of this year, it turns out it got more use. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I have a uh, code sample of uh, implementation. So let's exit full screen. Oh, OK. So uh, I coded up this little demo that you can, uh, how many of us here have a switch at home? Oh, oh, nice, nice. OK, you can, you can plug this in. Let's see if this works. So, so I'm connecting a sec. This is my first uh, gamepad, and then I'm con connecting my second gamepad. Um, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. So, okay, it looks like it's connected. Oh yeah, it is. Okay. So if I press the minus sign, you should see. Can you see? See a shaking. Uh, okay. I'm not sure it will work anymore. Like, okay. okay, let's go back to the previous one. It's connection magic. Uh, then if I press this, okay. oh wait, it's connected to the other one. Uh, okay, let's try connecting this again. So is this connected? <gasps> no, it's not connected. It's connected to my size. Well, uh, caveats. Uh, this. Uh, all right, so I'm just going to describe to you what's going to happen. If you have a uh, switch at home, connect it to this uh, demo, and then you can press the bumper or the trigger uh, or some buttons you like. And then some of them, I have coded some interaction that will basically the heart will shake if you figure out the correct button to press. Okay, so uh, let's go back to the slides. <gasps> Oops, sorry. Uh, spoiler. <laughs> um, where is my slide? Ah, okay. Oh, okay. Um, so, do I still have? Oh, okay. Um, this is also another caveat. So I learned that if you connect two game pads to a Firefox browser, um, it will crash nearly 100% of the time. So if any uh, Firefox developer is watching, uh, please fix the crash. Um, <laughs> Have you tried turning it off and on again? Um, this is what I am doing now. So. So, well, I guess it's not, it's, it's probably freaking out when I try to connect two gamepads to multiple tabs, and then each of them are like all thinking they're connecting to the gamepads, and then maybe they're getting confused. Um, so, okay. I hope there are many sides. Do I have my, okay. Uh, Oops, I just lost my sticker. Uh, click, clicker, uh, wait, sorry, the, the pointer. So beyond this, um, what I find really, really interesting is that you can, you can call the, you can program more gestures with the Skinpad API. If you notice, I was using a pointer uh, that was controlled by the Joy-Con uh, joystick. Um, and then maybe um, you can create more gestures like press, hold, so, um, and then release. And then uh, you can even code a combination of gestures. So maybe you can do 
uh, press, hold, swipe. Um, so that's the thing uh, that you can actually do um, if you start uh, coding these things. And there's no, like, there's no, like, um, hang on. So there's no like, limit to, um, so you can, um, I for this. Um, wait, 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 where is my speaker? All right. Um, <clears throat> So um, I found myself diving deep into thinking about gestures and uh, thinking about how I interact with the remote controller. And then uh, after a while, we realized that we were actually building the driver uh, for the clicker to work uh, in, your in our browsers. And then once our code gets, um, gets uh, complex enough, we are then forced to think about how to organize our code. So if you are slightly uh, curious now and hope to try out some of the uh, gamepad uh, coding, I find these resources really, really helpful. So the first one is the NDN guide using a gamepad API. Basically, you can build all the things I mentioned uh, following that guide. And then game programming patterns is this really awesome book talking about game programming patterns. It's actually not about um, game programming the industry, but um, the programming patterns that uh, the author learns as a game developer, and a lot of them are actually uh, applicable to our daily use cases. Um, and then on Switch is uh, an open source project uh, that is, you can consider that a driver for uh, the Switch uh, Joy-Con to work in browsers. And then finally, Enjoyable, it, enjoyable is, a, is, a, is an app, so it's not in browser, but it makes your uh, Joy-Con um, <coughs> uh, possible to work directly on Mac. So the, the, the third and the fourth are uh, both open source, so you can read their source code to learn from them. Uh, there are a few more links uh, that I encountered. Uh, so yeah, that's all.